and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning and welcome to the January 26th County Commission meeting. I would remind you to silence your cell phones. The meeting documents are on the end of the counter in the white folder. And if you need assistance with a um, listening device, Robert is in the front row and he can help you with that. We'll move on with routine business. Item number one is consider a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a motion? So, so moved. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two is approval of the County Commission meeting minutes from um, January 19th, 2016. So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any corrections? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number three is bills to be paid in the amount of $631,321.24. Pay the motion? bills. Second. 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 Commissioner Barth. Um, today's bills include 220000 to Armour uh, Correctional Health, uh, so that's, that's a big chunk. Um, thank you. Did we, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign, motion passes unanimously. Item number four is reports, there are none. Item number five is personnel action. Item A is consider a motion to approve the routine personnel action. Is there a motion? Second. Any questions for Carrie on routine? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number B is consider a motion to update the County Drug and Alcohol Testing Procedures Manual. Carrie Deaver. Good, good morning. morning. Carrie Deaver from Human Resources. The County has a Drug and Alcohol Procedures Manual that guide, guides when we drug or alcohol test our employees. And that applies for all staff, both DOT and non-DOT. Uh, recently, the Federal Motor, Ca Motor Carrier Safety Administration updated their guidelines on or requirements for drug testing rates, and they reduced them from 50% to 25%. So there's two changes in front of you today. One is to reflect this new change for our own testing rates and lower our testing rates for drugs from 50% to 25% for DOT um, random testing processes. The second change um, mirrors a practice that we've had in place but didn't actually include in our procedures manual. Uh, right now, if an individual is involved in an accident, a serious accident, or a serious safety violation, we would require that they not come back to work until the results of the drug testing or an alcohol testing were received. But we don't have that in our policies man manual right now, so we're asking for your approval of those two items to include them. Okay. Is there any questions for Carrie on these changes? Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number C is a special action, um, approval of a salary increase. Carrie Deaver. Um, Carol was hired as our commission administrative officer on July 15th. Because of the level of the position, the commission chose to do a performance review after that six months. The action in front of you today is to approve a one-step salary increase for Carol from 2610 to 2611. Any questions on that? All in favor? Oh, excuse me, I need a motion. I have a motion. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number D is a special commission action to hire um, an attorney for the public defender's office. I noticed in your routine actions that Amber Eggert's resignation was listed effective January 22nd. You might also recall that we currently have a policy that requires a 13-week break in service between full-time and part-time employment if somebody wants to transition to a part-time role. That requirement is there for Affordable Care Act purposes. We're asking for your exception to that policy to allow Amber to come back for employment in the month of February only to help with caseloads for the Public Defender's Office. She'll be working less than 20 hours a week. Okay. Any questions for Carrie on this one? Commissioner Kelly. Uh, I just have one. Was this an unexpected uh, change, or, or had they known about it for several months? Or it was a, the individual gave an appropriate amount of notice of a resignation, but I, I don't believe there was any any advance notice that she I would. I mean, be I understand the purpose of this is so she can wrap up cases that she's got right now. Is that? That's correct. That's correct. But the PDO currently has two vacancies, so in trying to manage that caseload, this was one quickie, easy way to allow the person to work just ten, maybe. I think they're really anticipating ten hours a week just to close up some of those files. So we're grateful to Amber for her willingness to do that when she's moving on to a new position. 
a good way for the department to address workload issues in the short term without really much financial um, implication. Okay, thank you. you Any questions? Uh, just Burr. a comment, uh, Madam Chair. I think we did something similar in the uh, Public Advocate's Office uh, mm -hmm. when we kept uh, uh, Ms. Howard on after her resignation to wrap up some things. Okay. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. Need a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion passes. You oh, excuse no, me, Matt. I was. Oh, you are. You're aye. Okay. Late aye. Most is <laughs> motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Item, item number six is applications for abatement. There are none. Item number seven is notices and requests. Notices, uh, item A is a notice from the South Dakota Department of Environment and Natural Resources for proposed renewal of a general air quality operating permit for concrete plants operating in South Dakota. Item B is to authorize the county auditor to publish notice to bidders in for uh, rehabilitation of a bridge structure number 50-192-040 uh, located on Highway 110 spanning the Big Sioux River, bridge structure 10-241-0880 located on Highway 118 spanning Slip Rock Creek. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay, second. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number C is authorize the county auditor to publish notice to bidders for MC Chip Seal 2016 annual Chip Seal contract. Make a motion. To a motion and a second. Are there any questions on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number D is authorize the county auditor to publish notice to bidders for software implementation services for enterprise resource planning software system. Carol Muller. I'm just here to answer any questions y'all may have, recognizing that this is a very significant project for the county. We have been planning for it for about two years to uh, update and uh, look at a whole new process for the county in terms of the financials and all the, the tangents that go into that. So um, this is the RFP today. We've been working with Barry Dunn, uh, Monty Wannenbach, and Kim Adamson, and I have been working with them closely and ensuring that this has covered everything. We have had legal go through that. We appreciate Kirsten doing that. So um, I'm just here to answer any questions you may have. Are there any questions? Carol, it's my understanding from looking through this, and there is a lot of material, a lot of which is very technical, um, but that this is just an RS RFP. It doesn't financially obligate the Correct. county to anything. Correct. And then can you just explain a little bit to us about the process when, the, when we get the RFPs back? It looks like there's an opportunity for some interviewing, and then it will come to the commission and we can decide how to implement it from I'm just I'm a little I'm looking for financial yeah. information how this um, is going to be rolled out and yes financial what's going to end up happening is that this is being released on uh, today is the day that it's being released we will have a vendors call coming up uh, where we'll have the opportunity to interact and to answer any questions that are out there Barry Dunn is leading us all through those and then you'll note that there is a date that they are due which is March 1 we are anticipating the week of March 14th that we will be uh, they will be notified the week of March 14th of vendor demonstrations the week of April 4th and April 11th. At that point, um, there will probably be a few more discussions, a few more conversations, a few more meetings as we make a recommendation to move forward. At that point, we will bring this back to the commission. Um, hopefully, we'll have solid dollars at that particular time, and then you will be able to make discussion. At, you'll be able to have discussion and make a decision as to how we're going to go through and pay for it, which may um, include different options, including uh, um, uh, do we look at doing an accumulation fund between now and then is one option to go through and do. Uh, bonding or opt out are different ways that we'll go through and pay for it, or a combination of different ways. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions? Commissioner Barr? Um, Carol, this is expected to be something in the seven digits, right, uh, as far as the costs? Yes. Yes. Our initial projections is the total project, including the RFP process, could be up to $3 million. Okay. Any additional questions? Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Motion and a second to authorize the publishing to bidders on the software implementation services. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. 
Item number eight is planning and zoning notices. There are none. Item number nine is petition for compromise of lien. Uh, Robert Wilson. Good morning, Commissioners. Robert Wilson of the Commission Office with a uh, couple of uh, compromise of lien applications for you to consider this morning. The first one is for DPNO 20881 in the amount of $1,984.43. In this case, the applicant approached the commission office last week uh, inquiring about a county aid lien that's in the name of her ex-husband. Uh, again, the amount $1,984.43. The applicant is not named on this, uh, on this lien and the <coughs> couple was not married at any time when uh, any of the liens were incurred that are in the name of the ex-husband. Um, the applicant is uh, preparing to close on the refinance of her home uh, here in Sioux Falls and uh, this lien was identified by the title company as they were doing their work in preparation for, for closing. Schedu uh, closing is scheduled for this Friday. Um, speaking with the title company, the reason they were connecting this lien uh, to this, this individual is that at the time the Mortgage, this, um, this mortgage was taken out, both the applicant and her ex-husband applied for the mortgage. And, and so they were originally on that. The, um, the ex-husband has uh, since executed a quick claim deed, is no longer on the property, but they are seeing that at the time the lien, that the mortgage was incurred, both of them had a stake in the property, and at that point he also had, uh, had lien, active liens at that point. So that, that is the position from the title company of why this was flagged in her process of, of moving forward to uh, attempt to close on this refinance. Um, so the, the action that we are bringing forward to you for your consideration today is a, um, um, uh, let me just, I wanna find my notes here, um, that you would compromise and release the lien in full only as it applies to the property listed in this case and it would remain in place for the full amount for the individual named on the lien. Okay. Are there any <coughs> questions for Robert on this? Commissioner Berry. This may be more for our uh, state's attorney, but assuming that I have a pre-existing debt when I get married, doesn't, uh, doesn't that follow me into that uh, deal? It, it does. I mean, my opinion is there's there's two bases for this. There's the, the marriage and, and the duty to support. That does attach, arguably, as, as a legal matter to this. But also, I think this is even more unique in that, or maybe not unique, but the connection is even greater here because there was a, a binding document executed by the ex-husband during, during the course of the marriage on this while he did have those outstanding liens. I think I think the attachment of the liens is legally valid to this. It's whether you as a commission under your compromise power uh, decide that it's equitable to hold her responsible for those liens that did all pre-exist the, the marriage, so. Any other questions? Um, I don't really know how to ask this, but um, was he living in the home or were they living together um, these liens were incurred, you know, one was 86, but they were as late as 98, I think. Is that right? I, I'm just curious, you know, and maybe it's, maybe it's not a question I can ask, but what the arrangements were, because they're claiming that the, the liens were placed before, before they were married. In, in review. In world, sometimes that doesn't mean anything. So. In reviewing the lien summary sheet, that that is our, our first step every time we're looking through one of these, there, uh, which lists the date um, that a lien was incurred and, and a broad category of, of what it was incurred for. There was a large gap of time, about uh, uh, 12 or 13 years, and that sheet is uh, included for your review, during which there were no liens incurred. All of the liens were incurred before that and, and after that. They were married during the point of that, that gap uh, and then with, within that same time period uh, in the middle of that, they also jointly, while they were married, uh, applied for the mortgage and, and were um, for a, a time both, both married and both listed on the, um, um, on the, the mortgage. 
Okay, but am I reading this correctly that there was a lien in 98, there was a lien in 98, there was a lien in 2000, uh, and they were married in 2001, is that, if I remember correctly? Correct. We've got, um, yeah, we have, have liens incurred uh, in 98, 95, 92, 88, yeah. 87, and then again in um, uh, 14, uh, one, one more in, in 14. Thank you. Is the applicant present? I do not see the applicant. Is there a motion or more conversation? Uh, Madam Chair, I certainly uh, can understand the, the situation uh, and the sudden need to get this done. Did the, uh, I guess I have another question, did the uh, title company drop the ball on this uh, earlier or is this, uh, I mean, how did, how did those liens that came about after they were divorced wind up being attached to this property? Uh, or I guess I'm asking a confusing question. As, as, a, as a purchase was um, preparing to close and closed in 2007, um, there may indeed have been some title work. Uh, if, if something was found there, I, I can't speak to that. And if not, I, I certainly can't speak to why action may or may not have been taken at that point. Again, that would, that would entirely be a function of a, uh, of a title company who was reviewing records at that time. So the, the liens were all incurred before the marriage and then there's one after the marriage, after the, after they were divorced for some time, so. Madam Chair, my, my perspective is I don't mind the idea of taking the one after the marriage off, but uh, you know, if, uh, if going into that uh, contract, uh, one party had a, a, a serious debt, rolled it into their uh, mortgage or whatever, and uh, uh, it seems to me there's an obligation when you're married on that kind of a deal. Commissioner Kelly. The other question I have is how were the lien, how were the liens not found when they got the mortgage? Is that I, I mean it, maybe this is the title company's problem. It, it's a it's a valid question and and we're just simply getting into actions that are that are taken and reviews that are that are um, initiated that are outside our control that, that we don't um, participate in. Okay, I, I just, uh, as a comment, I, I wonder if maybe if we denied the lien or denied the, the relief, uh, the petitioner would have a cause against the title company. Uh, Depends what happened. I have, I have no idea. Based on the record before us, I couldn't tell you that at all. I, and I do want to clarify, if I may, as a legal matter, uh, as Commissioner Barth mentioned, the one after the dissolution of the marriage um, I would agree as a legal matter, there's no legal hook on, on enforcing that against the ex-wife so, or the applicant. So I do agree on that one, the 400. Yeah, it was 400. $435. Oh, correct. And so, Cindy, did you come up with the total? It's at 1549.43. Did you, did you subtract that out? Oh, yes, and then I divided it in half in case. What was the total compromise. first? Was it 1549.43? That would be that would be the part that sh that would be, be incurred before the marriage that was attached with the mortgage. But you'd have to compromise at least that bottom part, and then what do you want to do with the rest? So. I just worry uh, that the quit claim thing is just too easy a way to to get rid of these debts. Uh, I'm looking for other input too. Other comments. Commissioner Hypergar, I mean, I would agree, and I guess I would make a motion to um, relieve the property of the four hundred and thirty-five dollar 
lien and and leave the remaining amount on the property. Okay. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second to release the, the last lien for four hundred and thirty five dollars, but to leave the remaining fifteen four nine fifteen fifteen forty nine and forty three cents against the property and that would still stand. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, item number B. Commissioners, we have one more uh, lien application for your consideration today. The commission office received a compromise lien application from uh, an applicant uh, for DPNO 87578 in the amount of $131. Uh, this lien was incurred for uh, court appointed attorney costs. And I will note that uh, I've been uh, working with the state's attorney's office to identify um, exactly what these charges were incurred for, what this uh, attorney services were, was incurred for, and they have uh, uh, no record of a criminal file involving this defendant. So um, uh, again, in working with uh, Sarah Show, not sure if this would have been a, a juvenile matter or, or some other uh, case, but we, with, have looked into trying to identify exactly why uh, this this court appointed attorney fee was um, incurred and and have not to this point been able, been successful in in uh, making that determination. The applicant in this case requests a compromise in the release of the lien in full with no additional payment and there is no real estate transaction involved here. Uh, this individual, uh, the applicant, first visited the commission office uh, several weeks ago. And, and ask for a compromise based on his extremely uh, limited income. Um, at that point, the original lien amount was $261. He had repaid $80 to that point. Um, he, he, real, uh, he relayed that he just uh, had a, a strong aversion to uh, having a debt out there. He had a very limited income and uh, ability to pay, but he, uh, he um, was, was asking for a compromise at that point. Um, I told the applicant that I would be happy to uh, process the application at that point, but he may wish to consider um, additional payment to at least uh, make a payment of at least 50% of the original uh, lien balance. Uh, and then several weeks later, he came back uh, after making a payment in, uh, that got up to within a dollar of that 50% uh, mark and again asked to uh, process the uh, the compromise of lien application. So that is that is what I've got uh, uh, to present to you. The um, the applicant uh, lists a 2014 income of just under eight thousand dollars. Has resources uh, and and assets that uh, total um, under a thousand dollars, including a uh, uh, twelve year old car and a, a checking ac account with a very small balance in it. Uh, and, and again, uh, has just made the, the statement a number of times that uh, has a very limited income and, and does not wish to owe any money at, at this point and, and made the um, payments he has made uh, in hopes that the remaining amount will be compromised. Is the applicant here? No. Comments from the commission? Um, Commissioner Kelly. I'm, I'm not... I don't have a big problem with this thing, except I'm concerned that, uh, and I'd like to find out before we vote, uh, what that court-appointed attorney was. If this is a civil matter and they appointed, that's not our, we do not do civil. And um, uh, I guess, I think we, uh, we could defer this for a week and find out what that court, you know, obviously it wasn't a criminal matter because it's not in the state's attorney's office, am I correct? Uh, and and there is a record for someone with a different middle name, but okay. the address and things don't appear to match. I would recommend that if you want to consider this, and maybe this addresses uh, Commissioner Kelly's concerns, that it be deferred for one week so we can look into this a little more. What I'd like to do is to, uh, pull the auditor's office records to see if there's any sort of, of more voucher, at least like a file number or something like that, that make it maybe can point us in the right direction because I, I, I mean, that would be fine. So I'd make that motion to defer for one week. I have a motion to defer for one week. I'll second 
Yeah. A motion and a second. There any comments on it? Madam Chair. Commissioner Burns. I, well, I just, I don't believe I will support this whenever it comes up. I think that this debt is small enough. <clears throat> we don't charge interest. They're at less than $8,000 in income. There's no question that this person is dependent on government assistance to survive one way or the other. And uh, I, I just don't see any reason for us to uh, give up uh, whatever opportunity we have to recoup some of those costs. Additional comments? I would like to say I concur with um, Commissioner Barth on this. Um, I haven't heard that this is a, not an able-bodied person. They have a job. They've been paying. Um, we don't care if you pay us $2 a month. We don't care if you pay us $25 a year. It's a small amount. There is no interest, and we did provide the services. Um, with that being said, if the Commission feels that they want to defer for one week, I'm fine with that, but I don't think I will be supporting this unless I something else comes to light. I do have one other question for Kirsten. Uh, Kristen, isn't it true that we do provide legal assistance in some civil cases where, uh, say, a divorce where someone might go to jail? Those would be not related to the divorce directly. There are some instances where it might be a civil case heading, that it be child support or things like that, where a penalty could be deprivation of lib liberty. That's the determining factor as to whether someone is Okay, but is there eligible. are cases where, yes, where liberty is at risk. Uh, Correct. That, uh, a uh, we may have to provide an attorney. Sure. Any other comments? Uh, Commissioner Heiberger, just to your point, I would I would certainly uh, say that in my conversations with the applicant, certainly stressed the, f the fact that that the payments of any amount uh, would uh, uh, be gladly accepted, and and he could go on for any amount of time and and make payments in as small amount as he was uh, was able to do. So that was that was was certainly communicated to the applicant. I have a motion and a second to defer one week for further information. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. No. Yes, whatever it is, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> a motion passes three to two to defer for one week. Um, next, we will move on to opportunity for public comment. Is there anyone who would like to speak about something that is not on the agenda? Good morning, DJ. Morning, Commissioners. DJ Booth, the Highway Superintendent. I just wanted to take this opportunity to uh, introduce to you our new engineering specialist, Melissa Schmidt. Uh, she's sitting over there, and she joined our team a couple weeks ago, and uh, already started working on putting out projects for us. So, just wanted to come and introduce her to you guys. Okay, welcome. welcome. Did you have anything you wanted to say, Melissa? Uh, Will she be up here presenting? In in her capacity at all? She probably won't be presenting, at, definitely not on a regular basis. She might be from here uh, for meetings from time to time, maybe to answer some questions or okay. something. All right, thank you. Thank nice you. to meet you. Thanks for coming. Any other opportunity and a public comment? All right, with that, we will go on to regular business. We have um, item number 10 is a public hearing to consider a motion and declare property, property legally described as lot four, block two, course. Corson Falks Edition 102-48 Brandon Township as a public nuisance and enact South Dakota codified law 21-10-6. Kevin Huckleman, good morning. Morning, Kevin Huckman, County Planning Department. As you just heard that this is a, uh, to hear a, a public nuisance case. Um, and the, it was legally described. Uh, the site is located at 26 009 482nd Avenue and it's approximately the center of Corson uh, site map here. Uh, the staff was originally notified of, of this property having uh, junk and debris and stuff on this property in July 9th of 2014. Uh, we looked at the, the site and visited. We found a couple of unlicensed cars, uh, lawn mowers in various conditions, some 55-gallon steel drums, um, and other junk on the property. Uh, we sent letters to the property owner uh, and with uh, no direct response, and then through various other site visits, we discussed with the property owner um, uh, what needs to be done and what can be done on the property to comply with the ordinance. The, uh, 
at one point in the spring of 2015, uh, the property owner did improve the property uh, and cleaned up much of the front yard, um, although there, there was still items of it, um, scattered throughout the property in general. Um, staff uh, prolonged the deadline for that uh, so that he can have more time to clean up. And since then, there has been little or no change in uh, the property maintenance. The on January 4th, 2016, uh, staff sent certified mail for uh, notice of this public hearing. Uh, on Friday, that would be the 22nd, I did visit the property again and I left a note, uh, uh, the same public notice, and that was received uh, because the property owner is here and he'll be able to speak. Um, the property has a history of public nuisance violations. The most recent case was declared a public nuisance by this body in 2011 and was cleaned up in that summer. The the Minnehaha County uh, Nuisance Ordinance uh, reads that any uh, abandoned property is part of the pu public nuisance. Any deteriorated, wrecked, dismantled, derele derelict, or inoperable property in unusable condition in its present state and which has been left outside of an enclosed permanent structure without being so restricted, this shall include deteriorated, wrecked, inoperative, dismantled, or partially dismantled, or unlicensed motor vehicles, dilapidated or unregistered mobile homes, trailers, boats, machinery, refrigerators, washing machines or other appliances, plumbing fixtures, furniture, automotive parts, waste building materials, junk, and any other similar articles in such condition. And I will go through some of the PowerPoint slides of some selected pictures from uh, uh, visiting the site. Uh, this is in August in the front yard, side yard, uh, side yard from a different view. And this is the rear driveway. You can see the barrels there and tires. And that's an unlicensed car. Uh, this would be September. Uh, there was some cleanup um, of the side yard, but most of it moved back <coughs> further off the prop off away from the property line and back behind by the accessory building. November little change. Uh, this would be May of 2015. You can see that that fence was built and much of the miscellaneous items on the ground were picked up and uh, that's where the staff gave the petitioner or the property owner extra time to clean up the property. Um, this is what would the backyard looked at that time. <coughs> Later that summer And then, let's see, this fall. And this fall, there was the addition of this tractor um, and some parts for the tractor, loader parts. Um, uh, staff has worked with this property owner and has found that uh, there has been a, a general uh, lack of cleaning up over the, over the past year. Uh, of notices and so staff feels that declaring this public n nuisance is the best way to move forward uh, and by declaring it a public nuisance you'd be acting South Dakota codified law 21106 which allows the county to declare a public nuisance to allow the county to clean up the property and defray the cost of the property owner so any questions any questions for Kevin at this point Kevin um, has there been liens attached to the property because of previous cleanup that we've done? The in the 2011 cleanup, uh, there was costs that were a special assessed to the property. Uh, and I looked at the records with the t um, treasurer's office, and it, from my understanding, those liens were paid, uh, and nothing since then. 
So the, the taxes are probably current then? And the taxes are not current. They're not? No. But I, from my understanding, the that original lien was paid from the last. Um, Can you tell us how big that was? Uh, I, it was, uh, I believe it was approximately $2,000. Okay. It was fairly large. Thank you. Um, the applicant is here. Would you like to speak? You do not have to come up to the microphone. You can sit where you are, stand where you are. You don't have to say your name, however you want to handle yeah, it. You just have to speak. Not, not on this. this oh, is he, oh, he does have to come up. Yep, you hearing. do have to come up and identify yourself. Sorry. You'd have to come up and identify yourself. I'm Lonnie Banghart, and I live at that property, and I live there, you know. The kids are there. The grandkids are there. During the summer, we'd ride the mowers around and the other riding toys and stuff. And the address on that property is not Brandon. We keep sending mail to Brandon. It's course in South Dakota. Are there any questions? Uh, uh, yeah. You might want to come back. We might have a couple questions for you. Have you been getting the mail or not? Yeah, sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. That's one of my pet peeves is people send me mail that's listed to Brandon and I live in Corson. So have you responded to those that you've gotten? Some of them, some of them not. Why, uh, why do you feel you don't have to respond to it? Well, how come they have to? The, you're the county. You should know where I live. You should put the right address on the envelope and mail it. Well, I don't know I'm assuming that's what's on the tax D or the tax is that right Scott okay I, I hear a nod from that that's when we look up the records it's whatever the tax address is South Dakota oh. here you want a state deal from the license plates I got yesterday of course in South Dakota this picture is from 2014 um, would you say it's an accurate representation of what's there today? Pretty close. No, not no, it's not. It's not accurate. Madam Chair. Commissioner Burns. Uh, sir, do you understand why your neighbors might complain about the status of your property? Yep. So what can we do about it? Put up a fence, I guess, you know. The kids Is anything on the property, if I put it in the garage, is anything illegal to have on the property? I don't think so. I'm mm -hmm. So why is it illegal if I have it outside? Well, I think if it's inoperable, if it's uh, unlicensed, if it's deteriorated, if it's leaking uh, oil or other chemicals into the ground. What is leaking oil? You know, most of my stuff is operable except the lawnmowers, you know, and I take them apart and put them together for the kids to ride. As far as oil drums, are you allowed to have a burn barrel in Corson? You're allowed so. a burn barrel. That's the big kicker. Everybody complains about the burn barrel. Well, there's burn barrels all around town if you look. And I live right across the street from a feedlot, you know, you always complain, well, you got mice or something. Well, yeah, they come from across the street. You don't think there's any, like, mosquitoes or anything living in those tires or? Most of the tires have. I drove past the property this last week, and it was a lot, from what I could see from the road, a lot cleaner than what appears on this picture. Is it the did not seem to be an eyesore from this. Is the outbuilding highway. filled? Yeah, I have stuff in it, but I can get stuff into it, you know. I can put all the lawnmowers and everything in there, but then I, then I don't have any room in there. Well, I, I don't understand. I mean, I, I, I think your neighbors have got a legitimate gripe. Uh, it's in violation of the county ordinances. I don't understand why you don't make an effort to put all that stuff in the garage or get rid of it. Well, I do get rid of a lot of it, you know. I just... If it's good and I keep it, if it's not, I get rid of it, you know. Additional questions? I will note that there, there there's only one picture from November 
the rest of these pictures are from 2014 and early 2015. He has put up one fence, but that picture is dated from May. So, Commissioner Hyperger, I believe there are at least three pictures from November. Mm -hmm. um, I have three pictures: one of the front yard, one of kind of the back and the side, and then one directly behind the rear building. Yep, I didn't. Oh, yep, so I see quite it. a quite a bit of property. sitting outside. Additional questions? Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I've, I've asked uh, the auditor, uh, the recorder, to uh, oh. figure the total amount of tax that's currently arrears. Okay. 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 That's not in here either. Yeah, the, so that number is 20, 23. Yeah, almost 24. Two, just under two thousand four hundred dollars is currently in arrears. Were you aware of that? Yeah. Okay. Is that just last year's taxes, Cindy? Do you know? That goes back to two thousand twelve. Two thousand twelve. I have a question, Kevin, Commissioner Kelly. If he's done. Commissioner. I have a question, yes, Kevin. If, if oh, Mr. Kevin. Mark. Thank you. Yes. Kevin, you said you were out there Friday. Yes, I was out there on Friday. Uh, give us uh, what you saw. So on Friday, um, everything's covered in snow, so it's difficult. What I, I just basically took a picture from the front yard, and I knocked on the door, and I left the letter. Um, I did compile a list of, of items from the pictures from October and, and November. I went through those and found kind of a list of items that are on the property. In, in October and November, uh, I, there is two unlicensed cars, five tires, three tire rims, 10 riding lawn mowers, four snow blowers, one tractor with loading arms and bucket, two sm snow pushing blades, one RV camper which is licensed, two snowmobiles, one paddle boat, uh, two children sized vehicles or toys, one push mower, one wood chipper, and one air compressor, and that's, and then various other um, uh, items such as uh, construction items like a door and plywood, five-gallon buckets, parts for lawnmowers and cars, wood pallets, that sort of thing. So that would be kind of a list of things that's on the property. A question. Okay. Additional questions. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Banghart okay. uh, another question. Sir, is there, can you make us any any offer as to what you might do to help uh, solve our concern here and placate your neighbors and and make our staff feel better about progress on your property? Yeah, I can put it inside. I want to put up a fence, but I didn't have time this summer. Could you move some of the stuff inside when it, the weather warms up? I'm sure it'd be hard with the snow, and then work on that fence this year. Yep. I don't want to throw your property away, um, but it does make it a difficult situation for us too. Is, do you need assistance in, in putting up a fence? No, that load tractor and loaders put together. I, I use that tractor to move snow, so. I don't think it's against county ordinance to have a tractor, so the it's tractor's what? not. It's not against the county ordinance to have a tractor, so it's not an issue. Okay. Tractor's not an issue. The fence I can put up six foot on the sides, right? He, he come out and looked at the one in the front and he says it's too high. Kevin, you want to answer that, please? So the county ordinance allows six foot tall fence in the back and the rear uh, yards. Uh, the ones in the front has to be four feet or, or lower. Um, so yeah, that's anything in front of the, the house. Okay. So can, starting at the edge of his house, can you do six foot? Yep. Starting so at the edge of your house, you can have a six foot fence. Let's see if I can put a map on. So starting at this corner Kay. to the side yard, he can put a six foot fi tall fence all the way back. Okay. All right, any additional questions or comments? Mr. Banghart, uh, can you give us an idea when you would uh, get that uh, fence going or when you would uh, probably because spring I can put a lot of the stuff in the garage you know that would be helpful um, you know we've had some trouble communicating with you and 
you know, whatever your address is, leaving notes on your door and stuff, we're not getting any response from you. And, and send we it to the right address. Is your front sure. door good enough? Yeah. Okay, well, so when someone comes, please interact with them and let's get this thing moving. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to give some additional time to the spring here, but this has to s stop. This has to be cleaned up. We can't have rodents and mosquitoes and, and uh, uh, chemicals being spilled. We, it's got to be cleaned up. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. I come home in the winter time and it's cold and they got snow outside and there's mice coming across the road. It hasn't you know, been that way for five years though. That has. Really? There's been snow for five years? Oh, every year there's snow in the winter. Oh yes, that's true. And, and then the there's mice summer. Mice come over, I have to put a lot of mouse poison out. I put mouse poison out all over. I've had them come and try to chew their way into my porch. Okay, we don't need to talk about mice yep, anymore. that's so. all right. Are there any more um, questions or comments or action? I'd make a motion to give him uh, 90 days to get this cleaned up to the satisfaction of the ordinance. I'll second that. 90 days. And I think at that point, I think you have to understand that at least in my case, I will uh, ask for vigorous enforcement if we have not seen some progress. Your neighbors do not deserve to have that. And they have rights just as you do, and, and I, th I think that you need to, uh, you need to get this stuff inside or get rid of it and comply with what standards are in Corson. Any additional comments? I would suggest that that be a little bit longer than 90 days because 90 days makes it the middle of April and we could still have ice and snow at that point and if those vehicles are frozen to the ground, you're not gonna get them off. Well, if that's the case, we can take action in 90 days, but I think, I, I think 90 days it takes them to uh, uh, almost the end of April and not spring. Additional comments? Commissioner Benega? Well, I would agree that we've uh, probably bent over backwards to come to some conclusions that we both can live with. And frankly, this has affected not only your uh, property values, but it affects your neighbor's property values and uh, it affects public health. So uh, I think uh, that time frame is enough to get this thing settled. And if it's not, then I think we need to take this into our own hands and that is expensive. So it's uh, your best interest to get this settled and taken care of before that time period. Because if you come back again, I don't think you'll have any leeway to make any other uh, uh, action taken. So I have a motion and a second to defer for 90 days. Does that 90 days mean progress? You're not expecting the fence up in 90 days. You're expecting progress on the cleanup and bring the stuff. I'm expecting the property to be cleaned up in 90 days. A motion, a second. Any other comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. You have 90 days. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 11 is consider recommendations to appoint Delmer Crone to a three-year term on the Siouxland Heritage Museum Board of Director effective February 4th, 2016. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Bill Hoskins, Director of the Siouxland Heritage Museums. Um, we're requesting the appointment of Del Delmar Crone uh, to the museum board for a three-year term. He would be replacing uh, Marty DeWitt, who completed his second th uh, three-year term and is not eligible for reappointment. Uh, this position with Robert's assistance was advertised for uh, a little over six weeks. Uh, Dell's is the only application that we've received for that position. Is there any questions? We'll move um, approval of uh, Mr. Crone to a three-year term. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Additional I have, comments? I have a question though. Uh, you've got a lot of volunteers and stuff working there. I, I'm surprised that none of them have a desire to be on the uh, what? Board, uh, to <coughs> well, 
Um, a, a number of them have cycled on, and in fact, Mr. Crone has served as a citizen member of the Museum Board's Endowment Advisory Committee in the past and, and has some uh, familiarity with the museum, and I think that's in part why he, he applied. Um, uh, my my question is not against no Mr. no Crow I, I, I I know my question but, but is why aren't there more applicants well I'm not I, I'm not sure at this point in time we've got a we also have the museum alliance board which is our private nonprofit friends group ha which has a number of different volunteer uh, members on that board um, I, I'm not sure Dick. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've got two city vacancies at the moment I'm waiting on, too, and, and in part, that's one reason I'm pushing a little on this, just so I can ensure to have a quorum for meetings. Well, I have a motion and a second for this appointment. Are there any other comments? Bill, I'm assuming, <coughs> I'm sorry. Bill, I'm assuming you've advertised these openings and that uh, it's an ongoing process. Um, yes. it was. It, Robert uh, helped with the advertisements, and it was about six or seven weeks. Um, we 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 had one other inquiry uh, a number of weeks ago. Uh, talked to the gentleman quite a bit about different board options because I have vacancies on the city side as well, and so. Um, but but I have not heard back from him at this point. Really. I'm kind of looking for board members year-round mm -hmm. because every year there's a couple openings. Okay. Any other comments or questions? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Item number 12 is authorize the chairman to sign the 2017-2018 uh, maintenance agreement between Minnehaha County and World in New World in the amount of $309,730. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Monty Wadenbach, Minnehaha County IT Department. Um, what we have for you is just a maintenance agreement with New World. Their name is actually in the process of being changed to Tyler Technologies since they were acquired. Um, but Minnehaha County holds that maintenance agreement with them. Um, and as you may know, uh, many agencies um, use that software solution including uh, 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 Metro Communications, the City of Sioux Falls, uh, Police and Fire. Um, so we've all been in communication and you know, planning ahead. Um, we uh, would like to have you sign this agreement uh, for maintenance to carry us through uh, March of 2018. Um, a majority of this cost is paid for by the city a little bit more than half is paid for by the city and Metro Communications. The remainder is between the sheriff's office, uh, the jail, and, and a few others. But okay. any, any questions? questions? Commissioner Bender. So Monty, the $309,730 amount, is that the county's portion or is that the total? That's the total portion that all of the agencies combined pay for. But since the contract is through us, we signed the contract, but we actually bill out the city of Sioux Falls and uh, Metro Communications okay. are the main, main ones. Additional questions? Is there a motion? So move. Second. <coughs> motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 13 is authorize the chairman to sign the professional services agreement between the county and Dakota Cemetery Management in the amount of $5,000 per year for cemetery administration. DJ, good morning again. Good morning, Commissioners. DJ Boothy, Highway Superintendent. A little bit of a brief history uh, regarding this agenda item. As you know, uh, the county owns and operates a property uh, immediately adjacent to the Highway Department property that is known as the Minnehaha County Cemetery. Uh, the history of burials at the cemetery goes back to the 1890s. And we have an interesting book, if any of you are ever in our office and want to take a look at it, that shows some of those burials, uh, the records of the burials. It's, it's kind of interesting to look at. Uh, it used to be known as a county poor farm, uh, which was operated just east of, of that site. Uh, Human Services Department today, uh, they conduct an investigation when there's a death 
uh, and they determine the eligibility for burial rights in this cemetery. Um, I'm not really familiar with that uh, ordinance. I think there's an ordinance uh, regarding the eligibility rights, um, uh, but they conduct an investigation and they let us know if there is if there is a uh, a person that is eligible to be buried there. Then we're typically contacted by a funeral home and uh, coordinate uh, the administrati uh, administrative services of, of conducting a burial on the site. Uh, the highway department, as part of those administrative services, uh, we will uh, faci facilitate the opening and the closing of the grave. Uh, we'll fill out proper paperwork for the burial record to be sent to the register of deeds. Uh, we'll have the permanent retention of the list of the uh, burials uh, at the cemetery uh, for the life of the cemetery. Then we'll coordinate monument placement re when requested. Uh, we also do the surveying and the platting and the mowing, the debris cleanup, and the security of the, the site itself. Uh, while there has been no previously set guidelines on how to operate the cemetery, uh, we have uh, become aware of an entire um, chapter in the South Dakota codified law uh, regarding cemeteries and burial records. And so uh, when we became aware of this, we started to look in closer on how we could, uh, how we should be managing this and realized maybe we're not the best people as, as highway and transportation officials, we're probably not the best people of it uh, to be administering a, a county cemetery. And so uh, we started having meetings with human services office and the commission office and just uh, coordinating between the departments on, on maybe what the best way to, to move forward with the cemetery is. And so uh, after much discussion, we determined that uh, probably neither the county highway department uh, nor the human services department uh, is the best candidate to oversee the administrative function of the cemetery. And, uh, and so we decided to uh, solicit a proposal from Dakota Cemetery Management uh, for the administrative uh, function of the cemetery itself. Uh, in, that, in that proposal, in the proposed contract that we've negotiated with them, uh, Human Services still does their investigation and then they notify uh, Dakota Cemetery Management uh, of a burial and then Dakota Cemetery Management works through all of the administrative function, notifies the County Highway Department that there will be a burial and we, we open a grave site that's eligible for them and then uh, and then they conduct the, the burial and coordinate that with a funeral home. And then the highway department closes the site. The highway department still continues to do the, uh, the mowing, the snow removal, and the site maintenance that's required. Uh, when we uh, have a little bit of time to do some more administrative work, we're gonna work to uh, see if maybe the jail or the penitentiary has some staff available to help out with some of the day-to-day the -day maintenance type stuff, mowing and, and that kind of thing. Uh, but right now, uh, we're proposing to keep that as, as a highway function. And so uh, we have before you today a proposed contract that we've negotiated. Uh, there's a $5,000 annual lump sum fee uh, that is proposed to be paid out um, biannually. And that includes, um, well, the, the fee includes all work for the administrative portion of the cemetery uh, administration. So. If you have any questions, if I didn't explain anything uh, that you wanted to hear about, I can try to answer those questions. Uh, Carrie is also here uh, from Human Services and can answer some questions too. Okay, other questions for DJ or Carrie? Commissioner Barth. Madam uh, Chair, I have a couple of questions. Uh, uh, DJ, how many a uh, year do we inter in this property? The, over the last several years, we've averaged between six and maybe 10. Uh, it seems like we're we're getting a little bit more and more every year, but at the most, maybe 10. Um, do we cremate any of them? About half the burials today are cremations. Um, if I may. Uh, do we know where everyone is placed? We do, we do have official record, yes. <laughs> we, and, and I don't know, maybe you're leading me into something here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's, <laughs> yeah, that'd be a first, not a Gerald. Um, like I said, uh, the, the cemetery started in the 1890s, and so we have records going back that far. Um, I don't know if it's hearsay or, or what, but uh, there's rumored to be maybe some placement of some bodies outside of uh, the cemetery itself, or maybe 
just with the, the mapping of the, the older part of the cemetery not being true and correct because maybe it wasn't surveyed. Um, we don't know for sure, we don't have any proof, uh, but we're very cautious when we're doing any kind of digging in that area because we don't really know if the records that we have are 100% accurate. Thank you. Commissioner Kelly. Now, do I understand that you're gonna continue to maintain the property plus you will open and close the graves? Right. But you won't even know about it until they call you and tell you to, to uh, open a grave for them. That's right. And in the contract, there's a provision on the time, timing of how that actually works. Okay. Um, we're given a notice period, and then we have a certain amount of time to open up the, the grave site. Good. And I believe the funding is coming out of Kerry's budget and not out of the highway budget. It's coming out of Human Services budget. And I they're aware of that. Correct, yes. Yeah. Any additional questions for DJ or for Human Services? I'll make a motion to, uh, to approve the contract. Okay. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve that agreement between Minnehaha County and Dakota Cemeteries Management. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, DJ. Thank you. I do want to add one more point I think I should have mentioned and I, and I forgot to. Uh, the way that this uh, contract is structured, it ends at the end of the year and, and it will be up for renewal negotiations at the end of the year. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 14 is consider the auditor's request to cancel January 17th and November 8th, 2016 County Commission meetings to accommodate election day activities in the Commission meeting room. Good Mr. morning, Lips. Commission. Bob Lutz from the auditor's office. A moment of personal privilege, personal privilege, if I may, Madam Chair. I wanted to compliment Mr. Boothie and his uh, uh, hiring practices involving diversity in which is typically a male dominated field and uh, I think it speaks highly of our hiring practices and evens the numbers <coughs> out a little bit. So congratulations Mr. Boothy and to a new employer. Um, reason I'm here today is uh, the 2016 election cycle we're going to have three elections. Uh, the city school election is April 12th with a possible runoff on May 3rd. Uh, we don't know. We'll have to assess that as we get a little bit closer to find out uh, about that third. But the two that I'm concerned about are the primary election on June 7th and the general election on November 8th. Uh, they're going to require a little bit of the, uh, the, the use of public space here uh, that day, uh, both of those days. And what I would like to reserve is this commission room, the room next door, and then I'm actually going to be spilling out into the hallway because uh, after these offices were built back here. We pulled the tape on it and started figuring out tables and space and all that, and I'm a little bit shorter over here. So uh, we, would, we would also be working out in this hallway. It wouldn't be closed down, but we would definitely be working out there. And I think that, uh, you know, if we could get these, uh, the commission meetings uh, postponed a week, that the traffic that uh, is normally generated from those would be greatly subsided and assist with that. Uh, so. And what I'm asking is, is to reserve these spaces and, and defer the commission meetings on those days till the next week. And uh, uh, that's, that's it. So I'm open for any questions here. Any questions for Bob? Madam Chair, it's not a question, but I wonder if, uh, you know, certainly we could cancel the meetings for those days, but it may be necessary for us to meet on Wednesday or something that week or Monday to take care of something. So I think canceling them is one thing, but planning on deferring any action till the next week is premature at this time. At least gives us an opportunity to make sure we don't plan any planning and zoning issues on yep. those particular days and we'll just deal with the rest of it as it comes along. So any other questions for Bob? Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Item number 15 is consider a motion to transfer interest earnings of $11,065.66 accumulations in the highway fund to the general fund. Every year this comes up here due to the shifting tides of fortune with the highway funds. They do accumulate some interest and uh, it is up to the commission as to whether you want this money to go into the general fund or stay in the highway fund. And uh, if you want to stay in the highway fund, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to move it to the general fund, it will take a motion. Are there any comments on this? Commissioner Kelly. Well, I would support putting it into the general fund. I think um, uh, our highway funds are so restricted that, that we have little we can do with them. And uh, I think our needs are much greater on the general fund side of this thing. So I and I'll make a motion if nobody else has a comment. 
Is there a second that motion? We have a comment. I've lost this argument for five years in a row, so I'm going to do one more try. I believe that those should be designated funds. They came for the purpose of the highway fund. They should be used for the highway fund, and they ought to stay in the highway fund. End of discussion. Yeah, we yes, did. We won oh, last year. Oh, I forgot. Year. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I will, fault. I, I will echo that. Um, we also had a very hard fight last year in the legislature to fund our highway department, and I think we are regressing backwards if we take the the um, interest that we have earned on those additional funds and put it into the general fund. We have a significant issue in our general fund, but that is for the legislators to figure out, and I don't think we should be transferring the interest. So I have a motion. There is a motion on the table I'll to, second it. to we have a motion and a second to transfer 11, to transfer the money to, money to, the, to general the general fund. fund. I have a motion, and that was your second. Yeah. Okay. I have a is there any additional comments? Okay. Better have a roll call vote. Commissioner Bunch. Aye. Stemner. No. Seneca. No. Kelly. Aye. Heiberger. No. Motion fails. Three to two. That leaves the money in the highway department. Very good. Okay. We'll take care of that. Thank you, Commission. Item number 16 is an update and status report of the 91st legisl legislative session on bills that impact Minnehaha County. Commissioners, good morning. Robert Wilson again. Um, the bills that I'm briefing you on are, are going to be a, a familiar set of bills at this point, really. We've got the, the main core bills that we've been watching that were uh, introduced early on in the, in the process. We've had one or two additional ones. Um, but really the, the, the ones that we're tracking most closely are staying pretty, uh, pretty much the same. Uh, we've got three bills that were uh, essentially procedural and style and form that came out of uh, recommendations from the summer study. Those bills, House Bills um, 1002, 1003, and 1004 are all moving fairly quickly through the uh, chambers. They've passed the uh, House of Origin and in most, most cases uh, been approved by the, um, uh, in one case, uh, been approved by on the committee level on the other house. Uh, so those uh, appear to be moving with uh, very little uh, resistance or question at all. Um, when we get into some of the revenue bills, uh, things are getting a, a little more interesting. Um, we've got Senate Bill 2 for with the uh, Act revised the distribution of revenue from the Alcoholic Beverage Fund. That was up on the um, um, Senate floor yesterday uh, that did uh, that did pass that was uh, uh, amended I think that amendment came in after I spoke with you last Tuesday where the original bill was 33% uh, each to the state the counties and municipalities that was amended to uh, provide 50% of the revenue to the state with the counties and municipalities splitting uh, the other 50% 25% each um, again that did uh, pass out of the uh, uh, the Senate yesterday, uh, fairly uh, uh, overwhelming uh, support. I believe there might have been five no votes on it. Uh, one, so it uh, will will move over to the House uh, moving forward. Um, potentially of, of significance, it uh, it will be uh, moving forward considered a revenue bill and require two thirds vote rather than a, a simple majority. That was a, a, a ruling as of uh, floor debate uh, yesterday from the. Uh, uh, president of the Senate, so that's uh, that's one wrinkle of it to to watch moving forward. Um, um, let's see, uh, the other uh, fee bill that we're really watching fairly closely as far as revenue would be House Bill 105, and this updates a number of the fees uh, that are charged by primarily the Treasurer's Office and the Sheriff's Office for some of the different services they they provide uh, and really um, provides some of that revenue to, to counties for a, uh, a first time where it hasn't been there before. Um, they, we've been working on, on trying to get a, a, a fiscal note or a, a dollar value of what this one would mean for the county and that's proving to be somewhat of a challenging um, effort be, because we're, we're looking to uh, track some, some revenues that we just haven't had had any in the past and and trying to make pro projections is is a little is a little difficult uh, sergeant Gearman with the sheriff's office is is here today and provided some of the information that the summer study committee that first looked at this uh, asked for early in the year and so in, when we're when I'm 
talking done talking with the the other bills he may be able to fill in a little information of of what they're looking w what they were provided and provided to the the committee and and how that may shake out but that one's proving to be a little difficult to see exactly what it would mean but it it would mean some additional revenue for the county um, uh, they've got a couple of public notice bills house bills 1066 and then um, Senate Bill 73, uh, 1066 would lengthen the required meeting notice time that we would have to have our agenda published, where now we have to have 24 hours notice uh, published prior to a, a meeting. This would take it to two continuous days. Uh, in, in reviewing that with the state's attorney's office, we, the uh, uh, effective change there would be that we would need to have our agenda posted by 9 a.m. Friday which uh, is, is a little earlier than we, than we currently have it out. Right now it's mid-afternoon Friday, but certainly would be a, a manageable um, uh, change that we could, uh, that we could adapt to uh, without too much, too much trouble. We'll continue to watch that one. Uh, the other one that I mentioned, House, Senate Bill 73, an act to clarify provisions regarding open meetings, really um, gets into some of the finer points uh, of what is considered a an official meeting and information exchanges back and forth uh, primarily in a teleconference setting and uh, again had some initial conversations with uh, uh, Mr. Kapmeyer about that but in in practice wouldn't mean um, much different uh, activity than what you already do where we you know we uh, don't don't generally have uh, discussions going back on on policy my matters involving uh, multiple commissioners so it, it's it's one to watch but but really would not make any uh, uh, real changes of what we uh, or and you do as a matter of practice um, th those are the main bills that uh, wanted to bring to your attention um, the um, the fee bill House bill 105 is up on the floor for floor debate today uh, we'll be watching that one uh, and um, the public notice bill uh, two days public notice that's uh, uh, on a committee hearing house local government today and um, one, one other bill that we have watched and I mentioned that either last week or or two weeks ago was Senate Bill 27 act to revise certain provision personnel requirements for ambulance services and to re repeal the hardship exemption that uh, was uh, re would remove the the requirement that two EMTs uh, would uh, would be required on on ambulance services doing surface uh, transportation uh, runs and that is a there was a question that came up yesterday of with with if that would be permissive language or or something that would be a uh, um, more of a mandate and if uh, in, in in our case the question was would would we be required to go with the the lower standard of and that that is not the case that, that all our information and what we're communicating back to our lobbyists at the the state association level is that 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 would be permissive that if you chose to through your ordinance uh, maintain a higher standard uh, of, of two EMTs on a call you you certainly would have that ability um, that uh, I realize I'm jumping around a little bit on some of the different bills, but that's a that's the the high level look at the the main bills we're uh, we're following. I I would ask uh, Sergeant Gearman if you have anything else that you wanted to say as far as your work in uh, um, trying to put a number on what some of those revenue changes would be. Don't mean to put you on the hot seat, but if you have anything to add, I would certainly um, um, offer that up to you. Okay. Are there any questions? Um, Madam Chair, yes, Commissioner. Uh, Robert, uh, do you anticipate uh, the need for us to go back to peer on Senate Bill Two when it goes to the House Committee, and any other bills that you expect uh, that our attendance might be beneficial for? It's it's hard to say until we see things uh, move forward. I, I think we're the the vote on the uh, on the Senate floor for uh, Senate Bill Two was. Um, uh, certainly favorable. Uh, there was there was good discussion. I was encouraged that uh, you had support coming from 
all regions of the state. You had uh, you you had people, uh, you had senators who previously had interacted with the criminal justice system in a number of different roles. Uh, former uh, police chief, former judge, uh, who have the experience of, of seeing the the effects of, of alcohol on the uh, the workload of the, the criminal justice system. Spoken in favor of it, um, but we. It, Every, every time it comes to a, a, a the next committee or the next floor session, it's a it's a whole new ball game, and and we'll we'll see as it as it takes each each step forward. I would encourage my fellow commissioners to um, reach out to some of those legislators that voted in support of Senate Bill Two. Thank them for their support, and um, I'm thinking that a few um, questions that were brought up on the negative side need to be responded to by this office or by myself or someone because there were some questions that were brought up that I don't think the information was completely accurate or maybe just need some clarification in what those questions were and I think um, I'll work with the staff and make sure we come up with some answers to those questions. Commissioner Kelly. Um, I, I think it's important to note that three, two of the five no votes came from Minneapolis County. Uh, three of the five no votes were from appropriators of which both Minneapolis County delegates are on. This is an area that's important to Minneapolis County, and I'm really disappointed that that um, they weren't supportive of us. Um, obviously, with with the other support we had there, it, it, it's good. Uh, I believe the two thirds is there, and I think it's important now that we communicate with the House and get this through. In the meantime, anybody that can talk to the governor, the governor's staff, and he, I think we need to to make that to try and, and get the governor to uh, come on board with this thing. It's a, it, it's only it's fair and it's a, it's the right thing to do. We we should be getting a piece of this action. Uh, I don't I'm not going to make judgment on the other two entities, but I think it's important that we get at least and it's about a seven hundred thousand dollar bonus to us, I believe, but. With the amendment, I believe it's closer to six. Six hundred. Six hundred thousand. Um, you know, I, you know, it. These are thousand points of light that we've got to approach, and we're not going to get a biggie. We're not going to get a sales tax, so we need to find these little areas where we can get assistance on this public safety problem. You know. And to put it a little bit in perspective, six hundred thousand dollars is not going to cover one murder trial in Minneapolis County, if I'm correct. Might. It'll, it's it'll probably not going to cover two. Well, it, it depends a lot on the, the okay. facts that go forward. But to suffice it to say is we do have a lot of alcohol fueled, fueled crime here. And, and uh, you know, that's what Senate Bill 2 purports to address. So, Additional comments or questions on the legislative session? Okay. Thanks, Robert. Item number 17 is Minneapolis County Liaison Reports. Are there any reports? Commissioner Barth? Well, I was at a, a fire chief's event, and there are some uh, stresses with uh, uh, on the west side of Sioux Falls with Wayne Township and, and fire coverage in that area, where currently the city of Sioux Falls covers it, uh, but they're increasing what they're asking for as far as annual payment from Wayne Township. And we have to face the fact that we're going to need to address the boundaries of our uh, ambulance uh, districts uh, before we uh, renew uh, licenses this year. And with that, Commissioner Barth and I did meet this morning with Lindy Young Emergency Management and have some of those preliminary discussions and asked him to um, bring forward some proposals in the in the coming future let's see as he looks at some of what's going on so Commissioner Kelly Jeff uh, Wayne Township does not have a fire department anymore no they disbanded it and then contracted with the city and do you know how much they collect on the I the, do not their revenues are from the levy? I know that they have I think 400,000 in their pile but they're the the city is raising the rate from something like 55,000 to 130,000. But is that, annually. I guess my question would be, is that, do they collect enough from the levy to pay the 130? Don't know. And they still have responsibilities for uh, the township roads and all that stuff too, so. I realize that, but the fire levy is specifically for the fire, is it not? 
That's true. It certainly does not cover that kind of an amount, though, and we've been giving them that fire levy all these years. Okay. Kim, do you know what? I do not know. Okay. Mm -hmm. We can get some of that information. I think Lynn's working on some of that stuff for us, so. <coughs> um, additional liaison reports? Okay, is there any new business? Madam Chair? Commissioner? New Sorry. business. I just want to comment, uh, maybe it's personal privilege, that one of us up here, uh, one of us is uh, celebrating a significant anniversary of their birth this week. Not me. Not me. <laughs> Kirsten. Oh. Yep. Happy birthday, Kirsten. Thank you. <laughs> Thursday. It's a crooked number. Yep. It's a, <laughs> it's a crooked <laughs> number, not a curved one anymore. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, is there any old business? Good morning, commissioners. I just wanted to uh, follow back and backtrack on a question you had two weeks ago, which is regarding the mortgage on safe home that Minnehaha County has with that. Um, two weeks ago, you asked the question is if that amount of interest could be paid down. To, I gave you a memo on this, and I'm not going to go through the history of what uh, of how Safe Home was paid for, but I did <laughs> reference that in there. Minnehaha County contributed $458,956 to the project in the form of a note at 6% interest. That was a cash payout that you guys did. The question was raised by Commissioner Benninga if this could be refinanced to a lower interest rate. The tax code for low-income housing tax credits has rules and regulations in place that the interest rate cannot be below market rate or there could be some negative consequences for the tax credits. In communicating with city housing, the 6% interest rate is the amount being quoted on current deals. Given this information, refinancing would not uh, lower the interest rates. So, and I would thank Kim Adamson because Kim really did the research on this. So, qu other questions I can answer for you on that? So we do continue to pay that off faster because we uh, cash flow safe home very well. And we have already in the past f four years now have paid an additional $130,000 towards the principal. At this rate, the loan will be paid off at 2022. And obviously, if we continue to make additional payments, that would pay off even faster. Okay. Additional questions? Additional old business? I would look for a motion to adjourn into executive session for personnel and contract negotiations. It's my motion. Second. Second. Okay. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Motion passes unanimously.